morning. Today, today I'm going to be reading from 1 Kings 3, 16 through 28. Now two women who were harlots came to the king and stood before him. One woman said, O oh my Lord, this woman and I dwell in the same house, and I gave birth while she was in the house. And then it happened the third day, Then it happened the third day after I've given birth that this woman also gave birth and we were together and no one was with us in the house except the two of us in the house. And this woman's son died in the night because she lay, she lay on him. So they, so she rose in the middle of the night and took my son from my side while he made servants slept and laid him in her bosom and laid her dead child in my bosom. And when I rose in the morning to nurse my son, there he was dead. But when I examined him in the morning, indeed, he was not my son whom I have born. Then the other woman said, No, but the living one is my son, and the dead one is your son. And the first woman said, No, but the dead one is your son, and the living one is my son. Thus they spoke before the king. And the king said, The one says, This is my son who lives. And your son is the dead one. And the other said, No, but your son is the dead one, and my son is the living one. The king said, Bring me a sword. So they brought him a sword before the king. And the king said, Divide the living child in two. Give half to one and half to another. Then the woman whose son was living spoke to the king, for she learned, yearned with compassion for her son, and said, O oh my lord, give her the living child, and by no means kill him. But the other one said, Let him be neither mine nor yours, but divide him. So the king answered and said, Give the first woman the living child. By no means kill him. She is his mother. And all of Israel heard of the judgment which the king had rendered, and they feared the king, for they saw that the wisdom of God was in him to administer justice. King Solomon and if you read the beginnings of chapter 3, you're going to see he had that dream and he asked God for wisdom and to an understanding to guide his people. And that's what God gave him. God's wisdom sees beyond regular human wisdom. And Solomon had that from God, King Solomon. God gave him wisdom. Many people went to him. Even the Qu Queen of Sheba went to him to find things out. Perhaps we need to ask God for wisdom and an understanding heart. As Christians, embodied by the Holy Spirit, that have the mind of Christ, don't we have the wisdom of God available to us, or do we not listen to God? Solomon was able to discern easily what to do. That situation could have been a very hard situation. But because of the wisdom God gave him, he knew the real mother would not want the child dead. I couldn't have seen a way out of that one. But God had given Solomon wisdom. But guard your heart. Later on in his life, Solomon had wives that offered to foreign gods. And that took his heart away. If you read Ecclesiastes, you'll get how he says, Everything that he had was meaningless except to fear God and serve him. With wisdom should come compassion. With wisdom, godly wisdom, comes God's ways. We can be wise in the eyes of the world, but lose it in the eyes of God. True wisdom, true evaluation, like that, understanding, only come from God. And God wants his children to have that type of wisdom and discernment on areas. We need the Holy Spirit daily to help us. All the wisdom of God is, is dwelt in Christ's bodily form. And then Jesus died on the cross, rose again, ascended to heaven. He sent his Holy Spirit. But here's where I think we get wrong. We try to figure things out on our own. We exhaust all our resources. But well, wouldn't it be better if we just be still and know that he is God? Psalms 46.10. Wouldn't it be better in a situation where we're feeling anxiety or overwhelmed? A situation like Sol King Solomon had to deal with, which would have been a very hard one. But he was calm, and he had wisdom, the gift that God had given him. Could it be that if we'd stop, 
and talk to our Heavenly Father and have his word in our heart and ask him that a lot of situations we're in that seem difficult, God would bring a clarity and a wisdom to it that we just don't have on our own. Today, if you're going through something and it seems impossible, you just don't know the what's going to happen. I ask you this. My God is the God of impossible. But if you want him, it says in Jeremiah 29, 13, you got to search for him and seek him with all your heart and you'll find him. So if you're going through a situation, it's above your head. If you're going through a situation where your wisdom failed and other people's did too, perhaps you're not drawing on God's wisdom. Perhaps you're not spending quality time with God. God makes things so simple for us because he knows that his thoughts are not our thoughts and his ways are not our ways. He's so much smarter than us. He's all knowing, all everywhere at once and all powerful. Perhaps we need to go to our Heavenly Father for some of these difficult answers in life. And perhaps the, the secret is being in his presence through the difficulties of life. They may not be taken away. But God may give you clarity in the area. Maybe you have clarity after that you learned a spiritual lesson. Maybe God's pruning you this season so you can bear more fruit and you think, God, what's going on? Maybe God loves you so much and you have bared so much fruit for his kingdom. He says, pruning time. It's time for me to get in there. It's time for me to cut you down a little bit so you can bear more fruit. It's time for you to get with God. It's time for you to understand what God's wisdom is. He wants to give us wisdom. It says in the book of James, ask God. Don't waver back and forth. Say, God, I want your godly wisdom and an understanding heart that I may glorify and honor you. Father, I pray in Jesus' name for my brothers and sisters. I am asking for wisdom. I am asking for an understanding heart. I am asking God to see things your ways. Because your ways are so much better than ours, Lord. You are higher than we are. You see the end from the beginning. You're the Alpha and Omega. There's no ending to you. You understand everything completely, God. Please help us to use wisdom to seek you. And to look in your word for the answers. And to be still and know your God. Submit to the pruning process. And bring you glory. In Jesus name. Amen.